सर्वधर्मस्थापकस्वधर्मस्वूप आचार्याण महाचार्यो रामकृष्णा ते नम वी आर स्टडिंग हियर श्री राम कृष्ण द ग्रेट मास्टर सेकंड पार्ट एंड वी आर एंटरिंग द फिफ्थ चैप्टर नाउ द नेम ऑफ द फिफ्थ चैप्टर इज असम्शन ऑफ द ऑफिस ऑफ द प्रीस्ट Now in the fourth chapter we saw that specially the last but one para we should see para nineteen. In the para twenty they are discussed about Thakur's rigidity about food and how that leads to beyond that. But the para nineteen tells us that he came to. Dakshineshwar, because his brother started his work there, and the Chatush party at Jama Pukur was closed. So he has come to Calcutta and he has to stay with his elder brother. So he came to Dakshineshwar and started living there by taking the raw food from. the temple and cooking with his own hands with the ganges water after this was the general trend of the chapter in para 19 we are told let us read para 19 once again <clears throat> the garden situated on the bank of the beautiful river and beautified with the panchavati filled with the songs of birds so beautiful river or rather that special holy pure river ganges beautiful no doubt first point thakur loved ganga and there ganga was always available not only loved ganga but he thought ganga is brahmavari so he staying very near the holiest of the rivers and beautiful in appearance the garden and beautified with the panchavati filled with the songs of birds garden Situated at the bank of the river, so river, garden, garden is another thing which will make the mind go towards God, peaceful, beautiful, and then within the garden there was a special arrangement of five trees together called the panchavati, and so that is. another attraction for the master for his sadhana like and then filled with the songs of birds so that is another holy association the birds are a part of nature and they always sing 
then the divine service will performed by devout sadaka in the beautiful spacious temple so beautiful spacious temple where god can be felt and especially when the puja is done by ram kumar who was a devout sadaka so all these are adding to the spiritual atmosphere in the temple the genuine affection of his father like elder brother so the support from the above is there gadadhar is still a very young boy so he requires a sort of support from above and like the father was his eldest elder eldest brother 20 years or more senior than him so father like eldest brother and some additional factors we have read about rani rasmani up till now and the faith and devotion of the virtuous rani rasmani devoted to god send it was born atmosphere in the temple is that faith and devotion of the virtuous rani rasmani devoted to gods and the twice born and of mathur babu her son in law so mathur babu about mathur babu we have got many hints here that he was very expert in work and devoted to the temple so that is another factor all these very soon made the dakshineshwar temple immensely attracted attractive to the master so it became attractive to the master that means for his future sadhana like who gradually made it his own even like his home in Ka at kamarpukur so he made it his own means he never felt the absence of his home home away from home that is how he felt there because now his life in sadhana is to proceed so from that point of view there can be no better home even like his home at kamarpukur in indeed he cooked his daily food for some time for some time that we shall see later on so that was not a big problem for him but he lived there with a cheerful mind and discarded that attitude of uncertainty regarding his future duty duty here means what he should do in future in future what he should do he need not go back to his home he need not continue his external studies he can just live here and get immersed in sadhana that is what the para 19 describes now we come to the fifth chapter and see the development from the other side that is what rani and mathur thought about him they helped him to make his his own still further and it ends the chapter heading that assumption of the office of the priest he himself becomes the pujari there then that puja he converts into his sadhana so that is how we are stepping into his sadhana with this background the behavior and the resolve of mathur since he saw the master for the first time now here more than rani mathur is coming into the picture because he was like manager of the temple the pleasant looks of the master his tender nature devoutness and youth attracted the notice of mathur babu so first what comes in the mind of the manager owner like manager are something outside which are indicative of something inside so pleasant looks pleasant looks does not mean physical beauty pleasant looks are indicative of the nature within and that nature is described as tender 
tender or soft nature is due to his because he was God himself or due to his love for God. Devoutness and that the further progress is that he is a bhakta. He loves God. And youth. Youth means here freshness. Freshness. Zeal. That is considered youth here. Attracted the notice of Mathur Babu, the son-in-law of Rani Rasmani, a few weeks after the consecra consecration of the temple. So Thakura started living there and within a few weeks, Mathur Babu is seeing him now and then and he has felt attracted. It is seen, now Sardhan Samaji talks about the divine nature of this. It is seen that the attraction of love is suddenly felt in the human heart at first sight for those with whom an intimate relationship is to be established for life. So due to past sanskar, as you may say, due to the future possibility, you may say, but that is what we generally see, that at first sight itself, some attraction is felt. The scriptures say that this arises from the impressions of the relationship we had had in the previous lives. So already we were connected with each other. And so at first sight, we may not know that, but that works and makes the person attractive. When we see it later, the relationship of profound love between the master and mother, both sides, we are led to conclude that there arose an indefinable attraction in the mind of Mathur at that time, within a few days. The master lived at Dakshineshwar for a month after the temple was consecrated in a state of inability to ascertain what he should do about food and other matters and that ninth varan continues for some time and that one month makes it finally decide. That is, ninth para is the anticipatory because he lived there and found so many good things. So that thing itself is taken up here again in a state of inability to ascertain what he should do. In the meantime, Mathur resolved to appoint him to dress up the goddess, Veshakari. So the main pujari will not get that time. So there has to be a person to dress up the goddess and discuss the matter with Ram Kumar. So resolve came in Mathur's mind and he discussed it with Ram Kumar. So now the goddess herself wants Thakur to get associated. Ram Kumar told him the whole story about the mental condition of his brother and discouraged Mathur in his effort to carry out his plan. That he does not like the Shudra, Seva, Puja and all that, all that. I is strict about his food, so many things. Ram Kumar told him, dissuaded, no, you do not go that way. But that was to happen. And so, but Mathur was not a man to be easily deterred. That is, we have already seen Mathur's character while in Guruva. Although his offer was thus discouraged, he was seeking an opportunity to carry out his resolve. Now, a third angle. Because when Thakur will enter sadhana, he will require a person, friend-like, servant-like, who will take care of his physical things. And that is happening. That is the divine dispensation. Ridae, the nephew of the master. Nephew means his sister's son. Cousin's sister's son, if you like. Another person intimately connected with the master's life came to Dakshineshwar at that time. Ridae Ram Mukhopate, the son of Himangini Devi, the master's cousin came to Vardhan at that time, in these days it is called Vardhama, that is the ancient name. The English people had made it Vardhva, or the local people used to call it Vardhva. That is, 
north west of calcutta came to bardwan at that time in search of employment he was then 16 So Thakur was seventeen or eighteen. He was staying with his acquaintances, his fellow villagers there in Bardwal, but could find no way to the accomplishment of his purpose, not getting a job there. When he came to know that his maternal uncles were living in the new temple of Rani Rasmani and were held in great respect, he thought that. there was every chance of his purpose being fulfilled if he could go there now within this paragraph there is something in bengali totally missed in english though very very important so like let us take that up before we complete the paragraph and that is we have seen rani rasman is a um, lineage and all that but now thakur's lineage because they have to describe what is himangini and what is vidara and so we come to this now if possible i will ask somebody to make this in english and then put up in the uh, chat box here for all to see but at present i will only show that in bengali this big chart is given and i will read out to you and reading will be in the same way one line complete second line like that manikram chatrapada it starts from thakur's grandfather Manik Ram Chattopadha, and he had three sons and one daughter. Shudiram is the eldest. Ram Shila, second daughter. Nidhi Ram, brother. Kanai Ram Kanai or Kanai Ram, last brother. Now we take up Shudiram. Shudiram's Son is Ram Kumar, Rameshwar, Kattayani, Sri Ram Krishna, Sarvamangala. Three sons and two daughters. Now we take up Ram Kumar, and Ram Kumar's son is Akshay. We shift our attention to second son Rameshwar. Rameshwar has Ramlal and Lakshmi we found and Shiva Ram Shivuda. So Rameshwar's Ramlal, Lakshmi, Shiva Ram. Then Kattayani, to whom he, he she is married is not given, but her son Sarada Charan and Sheetal Mani. They are the issues of Kattayani. Sri Ram Krishna, of course. Has the whole world as his son and daughters, and Saro Mangala's case also not given because she did not survive too much, perhaps. So that completes Shudiram. Now the second we saw is Ram Shila, and she is married to Bhagwat Bandopadhyay. Now they have. Ramchand Bandopadhyay, very dear to Shudiram's family, used to stay with his Shudiram. So Ramla Ramchand and Ramchand's no lineage is given. Then Shri Mati Hemangini, Ramchand's sister, daughter of Thakur's. Father's sister, Thakur's father's sister's daughter is Hemangini, and she is married to Krishna Chandra Mukhopadhyay, and she has four sons: Raghav, Ramratan, Ridha, Ridha Ram, about whom we read just now, and Raja Ram. 
So with this Rida, Thakur is like maternal uncle. But in age, they are very near each other. Because the difference between the Shudhiram's fourth issue and this Himangini will be too much. So Himangini's son is along with the age of Thakur. Then we shift to the last brother, Ramkanai, because that is going to be important later on. Ramkanai has two sons, Ramtarak. He was also called Haladari and Kalidas. And Ramtarak's sons or daughters, perhaps you are not there. Kalidas is Dinanath Ramdas Haramani. They are from Kalidas. So full lineage has been given. I will try. That other thing I think will not be necessary. But this thing is important. And I will try to get some print to make out this chart in English if possible. So we continue with the pattern. So we know that Rizharam is Thakur's brother's sister's Son, Thakur's brother, sister, Hemangini, and Thakur's brothers, Thakur's father's sister, Ramshila. Her daughter, Hemangini, and Hemangini's son, Ridharam. So that is the, if you see from Ridharam, his mother is Hemangini, and Hemangini is the daughter of Ramshila, who is Thakur's father's sister. So that is the relation. <clears throat> and this Ridharam came to Bardwan, could not get a job, and heard that both his maternal uncles, Ramkumar and Shiram Krishna, are living with great respect in the Temple Garden of Rani Rasmani. He thought that there was every chance of his purpose being fulfilled if he could go there. So Rida came to the Dakshineshwar Temple without delay and began to spend his time joyfully there in the company of Sri Ram Krishna, his uncle, of nearly his own age, who was familiar with him from his childhood. So now, in the old establishments, people could stay without any job or such like that. Because Ramkumar has been employed, so his younger brother and his nephew, all those could stay. So he came to stay there with the hope of getting the job. Now Rida is being described, important person. Rida was tall, handsome, and of a manly build. His physique was firm and strong, and his mind extremely active and free from fear. These are all things necessary for serving, serving Thakur. He could undergo hard labor and adapt himself easily to circumstances. When in adverse circumstances, he could surmount them by inventing extraordinary means, resourceful we call it. Moreover, he truly and tenderly loved his youngest uncle and spared no pains to make him happy even by undergoing endless bodily trouble that is what was necessary. And that was naturally in the era. Always active. <clears throat> Rida had not a bit of contemplativeness in him. Therefore, Rida's mind, like those of all worldly people, could never be free from selfish urges. Okay. Not contemplative. Body is the main. So selfishness comes. The more we discuss his relationship with the Master, since the earliest days, 
the more shall we see that the little contemplativeness and selfless effort seen in his life were all due to the constant company of the master. We shall we see these things. So that is not his inner nature. Company of the master had made that. Who was an epitome of contemplativeness and who may try to imitate sometimes in this respect. Out of that imitation attempt, these things came to him. The help of a man of action, courageous, reverential, and averse to free thinking. He was not thinking by himself, right, wrong, this or that, what his mama is doing, that he follows. Averse to free thinking was very necessary for the success of the contemplative life of one who was indifferent to eating, drinking, and all the bodily efforts. So somebody has to look after them and was ever thoughtful and altogether devoid of selfishness. So a corresponding person has to be found. Was this the reason why the Divine Mother bound up a person like Riday to a profound relationship with the Master at the time of his sadhana? Who will answer? But it is true that, but for Riday, it would have been impossible for him to keep body and soul together during that period of sadhana. And later on, mother will remove Riday. So all this divine play brings characters needed at the time of the fulfillment of Thakur's mission and then take them away. Therefore, his name remains eternally connected with the life of Sri Ramakrishna and it deserves our heartfelt devotion, reverence and obeisance forever. Because when we remember Thakur, we remember him as the perfected person, but that was the result of his tremendous sadhana. And during that period, it was Riday who kept him up. The master at the time of Riday's arrival. Now, from master's side. The master was 20 years and a few months old when Riday came to the Kineshwar. He was 16, master was 20. We can easily infer that his life now became easy to some extent. When he got a companion in Riday, whatever he did from now on, Bathing, walking, lying, sitting, etc., he did with his help. Otherwise, physically impossible. The doings of Sri Ramakrishna was always of the nature of a boy, childlike nature. No crookedness, no calculative mind. Appeared purposeless to the eyes of ordinary people because not for deriving any benefit. So purposeless. But Riday, far from protesting against them, approved them heartily and sympathized with them. This endeared him much to the master. So Riday is not a free thinker. His mama he loves. So what mama is doing is approving and supporting. Riday's love for the master. Now that bond is being described. <clears throat> Riday himself said to us that directly from Riday's mouth. Many a time I have felt an indescribable attraction towards the master since then and always remained with him like a shadow. Even a moment, minute separation from him was painful to me. So much love kept. I bathed with him, walked with him, sat with him, and lay down with him. We had to part for some time only at the time of taking our midday meal. For the master took from the temple stores uncooked provisions, which he cooked with his own hands. I took from the temple. He took his food under the panchavati, and I had prasad in the temple, cooked food. But I made all preparations for his cooking before I parted. So up to that point. His principle regarding food was so strict then that he felt no peace of mind 
Although it took food cooked by himself. So, more than that, he cooked his midday meal of rice, etc. himself. But like us, he took the luchi offered at night to the mother of the universe. Luchi is the Bengali version of Puri. Difference being that Puri is made of whole wheat powder, which we call atta. And luchi is made from finer part of that atta called maida, of wheat. But that hus, as far as possible, is removed. And that is maida. And from that maida, luchi is made. So, rice is the main thing for Bengalis. So, rice he was cooking himself. Now, luchi is a secondary food. So, luchi, in the night they do not cook rice. In the night they accept luchis. I noticed on many occasions that his eyes became filled with tears when he took luchi and heard him say sorrowfully to the Divine Mother, Mother, thou hast made me take food from a kaivartha. Everything Mother is doing. So that we get here, but in the night he has to eat luchis, not food cooked by himself. The cooking he is not doing in the night. And that is feeling sorrowful about. The master himself also sometimes spoke to us about the events of that time. I felt extremely afflicted to think that I should have to take food from a Kaivartha. Even many of the poor indigent people did not come to the Kali temple of Rasman to take their food. Indigent means poor. Poor indigent, he has said. Many poor people, caste conscious, did not take food there. For that reason, as many people could not be procured to take the cooked food offered to the deity, cows were fed with it and the rest had to be thrown into the river. Because they used to cook sumptuously in order to distribute to people. But if people do not come, they feed it to cows and still remains, so they throw it in the Ganges. But we heard both from him and Rita that he had not to take food cooked by himself for long. Now that comes point. Eh? Our impression, that means they have not told exactly what point. So Sardhan Swamiji is our impression. Our impression is that he did so till he took charge as a priest of the Kali temple. When he became serving Kali, then by the time he has outgrown and he has accepted food which he did in two or three months after the consecration of the temple. So after one month, Rida has come and another two months, he has taken the Kali worship and then he has given up those restrictions. Rida could not understand certain actions of the master, but he was following whether understand or not. Rida knew that the master loved him dearly. There was one thing only regarding him which Rida could not, could by no means understand. That means for some time. It was this, when he went to assist his elder uncle Ram Kumar, or for a little rest after his midday meal, or to witness the evening service in the temple three times. Huh? The master eluded him and disappeared for some time. Though master liked to be in his company, but not when he is doing his sadhana. He did not know where. He could not find him out, in spite of a great deal of searching. Asked about it on his return after about a couple of hours. So big time gaps are there. Huh? He did not give a clear reply, but said, I was just near about this place. He did not want to Reveal it to Rida. At such times and some days, when Rida went in search of him and found him returning from the direction of the Panchavati, he thought that he had gone there perhaps to answer calls of nature. Beyond Panchavati was that place. And did not ask him anything. So he imagined something and was satisfied. 
but for two hours. Eh? Mathur praised the image of Shiva made by the Master. Now one event takes place. We already have read that right from his childhood, he could show the potters how to make images and he could himself make images nicely for worship from his childhood. This is what Rida said. Once at that time, the master had a mind to make an image of Shiva and worship him in it. Worship Shiva in that image. We already said that sometimes he did this in his childhood at Kamarpukur. As soon as there arose that desire in his mind, he took some earth from the bed of the river, made with his own hands an image of Shiva, together with the bull, the tabor and trident, you know, Shiva is always associated with his servant and uh, this Vaha, sorry, ride, riding place, and that is the bull, Nandi. One hands, an image of Shiva together with the bull, and Shiva is that tabor, what we call Damaru, in his hand. And trident as his weapon. And began to worship him in the image. Mathur happened to come there. <laughs> happened. By providence. In course of a stroll. And eager to learn which god the master was worshipping intently. Approached and saw that image. Though not big for public worship. The image was beautiful. Mathur was delighted to see it. No sooner had he seen it than he felt that images so expressive of divine nature were not available in the market. So Mathur could appreciate it that way. And divine appearance, market images are no such like that. He then asked out of curiosity, where you, have you got this image from? Who has made it? He was astonished to know from Riday that the master knew how to make images of deities and to set broken parts of images that will be used later on. He requested that the image might be given him after the worship. Riday agreed and with the permission of the master, after the worship is over, they do not want it. So it is given if somebody wants. Riday agreed and with the permission of the master took the image when the worship was over and gave it to Mathur. When Mathur got the image, he looked at it very minutely. From a distance, he was saying now minutely. And being charmed with it, sent it on, sent it on to the Rani to have a look at it. The Rani to highly praise the maker and express surprise like Mathur when she knew that the master had made it. They are seeing him as a simple innocent boy, but they have seen it beautiful uh, art in his hands. Now here there is a footnote. Some say that this event happened at the time when the master assumed the office of the priest and that Mathur showed it to the Rani saying, the goddess will soon become awakened as we have got a competent priest. But this is in footnote because this seems to be the preclude of his appointing as a Pujari. A short time previously, Mathur had a desire to appoint the master to do the temple duties. That desire became stronger now when it became acquainted with this new accomplishment of the master. So that devotion mixed with art, art with devotion is there. So I should put him in some job of the temple. The master had already heard from his brother of the intention of Mathur, but did not give ear to it as there was firmly fixed in his mind from childhood the idea that he would not serve anyone but God. Service. We are mad searching for jobs. And master's mind was free. 
He did not want a job under anybody. He will serve God. Now, this point is being discussed separately. The master's opinion on service. Much later on, much later on. But Sardana Swamiji's style is not chronological. So he wants to explain a point. And so he has brought that event here. We heard the master expression, we, that means much later on. We heard the master express on many occasions that opinion about taking service. The master did not hold in high regard anybody who served another without being hard pressed by need. At most compulsory circumstances, then it is different. Once when he knew that one of his boy devotees, Swami Niranjananda, took service, he felt much pain and was heard to say, I feel more pain to hear that he has taken service than if I had heard of his death. That must strong. When the master met him later and knew that he had taken service for the maintenance of his helpless old mother, he said, passing his hand affectionately over his head and body, there is no harm in that. You are not to blame when you have taken service for that purpose. But had you done so prompted by selfishness and needlessly, not for the sake of your mother, I could not have touched you anymore. So he's touching, caressing and telling this. So I say, my Niranjan has not the slightest Anjan. Niranjan. Anjan means stain. My Niranjan has not the slightest stain in him. Why should he be so low? Now that event continues, huh? all the newcomers were surprised to hear those words of the master to Nitya Niranjan, that is his actual name. For that was his full name. And one was cheeky enough to say, Sir, you condemn service, but how can we maintain our families without taking to it? The master replied, let him take service who likes it. I don't forbid all to do that. I say this only to them, pointing to Niranjan and the other boy devotees. Their case is different. They have to rise very high in spiritual life. The master was fashioning the lives of his boy devotees in a different manner. And he, it goes without saying, gave such advice because taking service was not consistent with the requisite spiritual attitude, high attitude. So, Saradhan Swamiji has made it clear, householders have to maintain their family, let them take service. But not the boys who want to become sannyasis later on, who want to devote their whole life and energy to God. So, that point is over. We come back to Mathur and Thakur. The master felt hesitant to go to Mathur lest he should ask him to take service. Because he has heard from Ramkumar. Ramkumar told Mathur, dissuaded, but it was the brother also to find out. And he had known that. When the master knew of the intention of Mathur Babu from his brother, he tried to remain as far as possible out of his sight and avoid him. For just another beauty of Thakur's character. For just as he was no respecter of persons in his observance of truth and religion, with his body, mind and speech, if they are against spirituality or obstructions, he would condemn them. So you are, so you always felt unwilling to pain anyone by displaying his disregard. So he has no regard. But for the many people. But he won't show that disregard which will hurt them. That is the way. He was no respecter. But this open condemnation would come only with some different people. But not with people he would better avoid that. If there were no strong reason for it, that is a given. So the future event is there when Yadu Malik or somebody was criticizing 
telling that even Yudhishthir had to tell a lie and Thakur told you are seeing only that lie of Yudhishthir and he condemned him like anything. Also to another person he said, why you are keeping so many chatukar, only flatterers with you. So that he used to do when the occasion demanded, not, not just for sake of doing it. So balanced is his mind. Again, it was in the master's nature to esteem the merits of a person of good qualities and honor a respectable man in a simple, natural way. A man is respectable. Yad yad vibhuti mat sattam shri mad urjita mevava tatta devavo gachattam mama tejyamsha sambhavam Bhagavan Krishna has told at the end of the 10th chapter of the Gita. So, the speciality is a respectable man and man of good qualities. So, gunir gunir kadar manir man deva in Bengali. Mani, a man respectful, you should give respect. A man with several qualities, you should appreciate the quality. in a simple, natural way, without any expectation of favor. He is not flattered. He is not doing that for gaining some favor. But because he is a respectable person, he is respecting, because he has merit, so he is praising. How delicate balance Sardhan Swamiji has analyzed and showed the spiritual and the worldly. If Mathur requested him persistently to accept the office of the priest in the temple before he had himself arrived at a conclusion about it, if he decides, then it is a different thing. But before that, before he had himself arrived at a conclusion about it, he would have to refuse it and thus pain it. We clearly see that this apprehension was at the root of his action of the master avoiding. Besides, he was then a young man of no importance. And Mathur, the Rani's right-hand man, was a very important person. Under the circumstances, it would not look well and would be regarded as boyish wantonness on his part to refuse Mathur's offer. So, from the worldly point of view. But the more the time passed, the more pleasant did it seem to him to live at the Dakshineshwar Kali temple. That was that last but one para in the previous chapter. This mood of his was not concealed from himself. Possessed as he was of inward insight. Inward insight, introspection was strong in him and he had found that he is liking this place as the place of his sadhan. From a series of events that took place during this time, it is clear to us that he had no objection now to live at the Chinachu. If he were allowed to live there without accepting the responsibility of any weighty duty, responsible duty, and his mind was not anxious now to return to his birthless Kamarpukur. So about this, in that last paragraph we have read, last but one, and this in this period it had happened. The master accepted the office of the priest. A big jump. And that will help him to put his mind in sadhana. What the master apprehended came to pass one day. Mathurbhavu came to the temple to pay his obeisance, saw the master at a distance and sent for him. The master was walking with Riday and seeing Mathur at a distance was moving away from there. When Mathur's servant came and said to him, Babu wants you. Babu means what you call lord or gentleman, owner, manager. This has not been translated called Babu. Babu wants you. Rida saw the master reluctant to go to Mathur and asked him the reason. He said, as soon as I go there, he will ask me to remain here and take service. Riddha said, what is the harm in that? 
It is only good to be appointed to work under a great man in such a place. Why are you then reluctant? The master replied, I have no mind to be tied down to service for life. Besides, if I agree to perform the worship here, I must be responsible for the ornaments on the person of the goddess. That is a difficult task. It will not be possible for me. But if you take that responsibility and stay here, I have no objection to perform the worship. So, taking a job and all that, performing the worship is dear to him. And that if it comes as a job, I can do. Not for money, but as a work. Other responsibilities, you have to handle. Some people have that constitution, anyway. And now a much future incident is coming to my mind. After Swami Brahmanji is passing away, other trustees wanted Sardhan Swamiji to be the president. Sardhan Swamiji made a big salutation in front of Mahapuruji and declared he is the president. Mahapuruji said, I do not want it. Because I cannot hold all these responsibilities. Sardhan Swami said, that I shall manage. You only become the president. Such a distant but associative similar incident came to my mind. So I quoted it here. It was really in search of employment that they had come there. Therefore, he gladly agreed to what the master said. The master then went to Mathur and requested by him to take service in the temple, express his conditional assent. Mathur agreed. Because a lot of money was there, he would appoint two people. He appointed the master to dress the image in the Kali temple from that day and asked Hrida to assist him and Ramkumar. Ramkumar became free from anxiety to a great extent to see his brother agreeing to do that duty at the request of Mathur. Ramkumar is taking from other point of view, that future and all that. Now, one incident happened. The image of Govinda broke. All the events mentioned before came to pass within three months after the temple was consecrated. It was the end of AD 1855. The ceremony is in connection with the 8th lunar day. The birthday of Sri Krishna had been properly performed without let or hindrance in the temple the day before. Krishna Paksha Ashtami, 8th lunar day, 8th lunar day of the dark fortnight. And next day is the Nanda's festival. Because the story is that as soon as Krishna was born at midnight, the, his father who was in jail and Kamsa was to kill all his children. So he was divinely commanded to take the boy and exchange it or keep it in Nanda, his friend's house. So he went to Nanda and there his wife Yashoda had recently delivered this baby girl. She was unconscious. And he put the boy there and took the girl and came out. So Kamsa saw a girl. And when he tried to kill her, she flew away, taking, telling that your enemy is alive. So Nanda's people found Krishna on the next day. And so in Gokul or in many temples, second day is Nanda also. Celebration in Nanda's house. That was the day of the Nanda festival. The special midday worship of and the offering of food, etc., to Radha Govinda were over. The priest Kshetra Nath, which that um, agent had appointed his own brother, that the priest Kshetra Nath took Radha Rani to another room and put her to bed there. That was the custom, especially in the Vaishnava temples. That the image is lifted, taken to another room, and kept on bed like sleeping. He came back 
and while taking Govinda, fell down when one leg of the image broke. There arose a great commotion in the temple over the event. Opinions of various pundits were taken before the broken leg of the image was set and the worship of the image was continued. This we have already read in the Guru Bhav. But the essence is being given here in this connection. Before the broken leg of the image was set and the worship of the image was continued according to the master's advice. Having seen the master sometimes enter into ecstasy, Mathur became eager to seek his advice regarding the substitution of the broken image. So Thakur was already appointed as the Veshikari of the mother. Before that, Master was in an ecstasy. Rida stated that the Master was in an ecstatic mood before advising Mathur and said at the end of that ecstasy that substitution was not necessary. So this is not from the ordinary human level, but from ecstasy like a divine command. It was not unknown to Mathur that the Master could beautifully set broken parts of images because uh, in the beginning itself, we had told him. He therefore had to set the leg of the image now at Mathur's request. He did so. He did it so well that even now it cannot be known that the image ever got broken, even if one examines it very minutely. So, now it has been shifted and it is kept in a nearby place. You can see it. Now about the broken image. After the image was broken, many people said many things about the fruitless worship of an image destitute of a limb. But Rani Rasmani and Mathur Babu had firm faith in the reasonable advice of the master and did not give ear to those talks. Anyhow, the priest Khetranath was dismissed from service for carelessness. And the master was placed in charge of the worship. So step by step. Was placed in charge of the worship of Radha Govinda. Since then, Rida assisted Ramkumar in dressing the image of the mother Kali at the time of her worship. So that dresser, Rida was only helper. But now Rida became the dresser and master came to Radha Govinda temple. The master's words to Jaina ran about the worship of a broken image. <coughs> Rida mentioned to us another fact about the broken image on another occasion. There is the ghat belonging to Ratan Roy, the well-known landlord of Nara, Nadal, huh? near Kuti Ghat at Varanagar, in front of Belurmat. A few miles north of Calcutta, before Dakshineshwar. There is a temple near that ghat. The image of the ten Mahavidyas are installed there. Ten forms of goddess, called ten Mahavidyas are installed there. Formerly there had been good arrangement for worship, offerings, etc. in that temple. But at the time we are speaking of, it was in a decaying condition. Sometime after when Mathur had come to have much devotion to and reverence for, when we are speaking of, that means Thakur, before Thakur's time, at that time. Sometime after when Mathur had come to have much devotion to and reverence for the master, they both once went to see the temple. Finding the temple in straitened circumstances, the master asked Mathur to make an arrangement for a monthly supply of two mounds of rice, a mound is 40 kilos approximately, and a sum of two rupees, to which he readily agreed, two rupees. One day while returning after paying one of his occasional visits to the temple, 
the master saw Jainarayan Bandopadhyay, the well-known landlord of the place, much, much later, huh? standing with many people in the ghat consecrated by himself. As he was known to Jainarayan, he went to meet him. Jainarayan saluted and welcomed him respectfully and introduced him to his companions. In the course of the conversation, he raised the topic of the Kali temple of Prani Rasmani and asked the master, Sir, is Govinda of that temple broken? Govinda. The master said to him, ah, What a fine understanding can one who is an indivisible whole be broken? Ah, what a fine understanding can one who is an indivisible whole be broken? Akhanda is Bhagwan. How can he be broken? Finding the possibility of various vain topics being raised on the question put by Jainarayan, the master then changed the course of the talk. Introducing another topic, he advised him to give up unessential parts of everything and accept the essential only. The intelligent Jainarayan also took the hint from the master and refrained from putting such vain questions. So, the taking Kali temple worship will come next. And before that, send more things. So we take it up tomorrow. Om Sarva Dharma Sthapakasam Sarva Dharma Swarupakaha Acharyana Mahacharyo Ramakrishna Yate Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu. Mm-hmm.